Hi, I'm Dr. Jack West, medical oncologist from Swedish Cancer Institute in Seattle, and I'm coming now from Madrid, where I'm here for the ESMO 2017 conference, a very important meeting where there's a lot of very provocative information being presented on lung cancer. In fact, the first presidential symposium uh, of ESMO is entirely on lung cancer. And in fact, the first abstract presented, Late Breaking Abstract 1 by Dr. Pazares and colleagues, doesn't disappoint. It is on the Pacific trial, a randomized trial of Dervalimab versus placebo after chemo and radiation for patients with locally advanced stage 3 unresectable non-small cell lung cancer. Now this was a 2 to 1 randomization of patients who completed chemo and radiation, at least two cycles of chemotherapy, as well as defense definitive radiation to about uh, 60 gray. And then patients, over 700 in total, were randomized two to one to either Dervalimab with 473 receiving that immune checkpoint inhibitor every two weeks for a year, or placebo in 236 patients every two weeks for a year, with the primary endpoints being progression-free survival and overall survival, co-primary endpoints and several other secondary endpoints as well. Now, uh, coming into it, we knew it was a positive trial, but we didn't know if the magnitude of the difference was really going to be enough to change practice. But let me say, these differences are impressive. I would say very clinically significant, not just statistically significant. And I'm, I'm showing those here, basically a summary of the key efficacy results. And you can see that the median progression-free survival uh, was a full three-fold higher in the recipients of Dervalimab, 16.8 months versus 5.6 months with placebo, which is about what we would expect to see. This is sustained over time, and when we look at landmark endpoints like 12-month progression-free survival, the Dervalimab arm has a 55-56% 12-month progression-free survival, 20 percent higher than with placebo, where it's 35.3 percent. It's sustained out even at 18 months, where it's 44.2 uh, percent with Dervalimab versus 27 percent with placebo. The response rate, so we did see additional shrinkage of patients' tumors in some patients even after the completion of chemoradiation, and you can see that uh, just with observation afterwards, but uh, it was higher with Dervalimab, 28.4% versus 16% with placebo. And the duration of the response when that happened was, uh, was higher. At 18 months, it's 72.8% of the patients with shrinkage on Dervalimab, it's still holding up versus just under half, 46.8% with placebo. When we look at the median time to death or distant metastases, it's a very significant difference. 23.2 months with Dervalimab versus 14.6 months with placebo. And that is statistically significant, as was the overall progression-free survival, highly statistically significant difference. Now, of course, it's not just about efficacy, but tolerability. We're talking about a year of treatment. Was this tolerable? Well, absolutely yes. Uh, the Dervalimab arm only had a slightly higher rate of grade three or four toxicities. It was 29.9% with the Dervalimab versus 26.1% with placebo. There was a difference in pneumonitis rates, and it was 33.9% with Dervalimab versus 24.8% with placebo. And treatment discontinuation was a little higher as well, 15.4% with Dervalimab versus 9.8% with placebo. But overall, when we look at these results, despite not having presentation of overall survival, which wasn't analyzed in the interim analysis, the early results that we're seeing here uh, demonstrates such a significant difference in the magnitude of benefit that this is should be expected to translate to a survival difference that isn't just statistically different, but is clinically very meaningful. This, in my mind, should be practice changing as soon as we can, can execute it. We should be giving Dervalimab. It's very likely, I would say, that other immune uh, checkpoint inhibitors 
uh, that inhibit PD-1 or PD-L1 will have the same efficacy. But at this point, we have the data with Dervalimab that are very impressive. And I look forward to using this as soon as I possibly can for my own patients. It's likely to be very well tolerated. We'll need to see long-term overall survival results. Uh, and we'll also need to clarify whether the benefit is limited to a subset of patients with higher level PDL1 or any other identified markers. But at this point, the intent to treat analysis for this overall study should be enough to lead to Dervalimab being approved as readily as possible, and I think it's going to change practice as well it should. We have been without any meaningful improvements for stage three non-small cell lung cancer for more than a decade. This changes now. I'll be interested in your thoughts and I'll have other comments and, and uh, reported results from ESMO in the next few days. Thanks.